Okay, in this video we're going to look at statistical significance in general and then statistical significance in medical science or in drug trials and um, we'll do example uh, 1, 2, this uh, example 3, this is example 4, this is example 5 and then example 6. Okay. So let's start with example 1. Which of these events are statistically significant in your opinion? <coughs> and then we're going to estimate a p-value of probability for each event. Now, what is statistical significance? It's an event that is highly unlikely. That's all. Is it highly unlikely? Then it's statistically significant. Let's just uh, keep it at that for now. So let's start with this one. You travel for 10 miles on the freeway and are overtaken by more than three different cars during the drive. Is that a very unlikely thing to happen? Now, more than three, I mean three cars, four cars, five cars, six cars, or, you know, or sorry, well, more than three would be uh, four cars, five cars, six cars, seven cars, that type of thing. So, four or more. I mean, is that highly unlikely? I guess it depends how fast you drive, right? If you're driving really, really fast in the outside lane, then maybe you're not going to be overtaken by anybody. But, um, yeah, I, I guess it kind of depends on the person. Let's say you drive, drive at an average speed uh, in one of the middle lanes. Um, do you think that's unlikely? Probably, pro probably not really, right? So we wouldn't call this statistically significant. This is not a big deal. It's not that unlikely. So you'd say this is likely. This is a, a likely event, right? Um, a man is walking on a sidewalk. He steps over a banana skin so as not to slip in it, but falls into a manhole. Is that a likely event or an unlikely event? So, you know, what's the chances that, you know, when you see this, the banana skin and you step over it, that you actually fall into a manhole afterwards, right? That's, is, does that sound like bad luck to you? Right? So you would call that unlikely, right? Um, how about you flip two coins and both are tails? Um, so, so in any case, unlikely, and, and sorry, we'll stay on B. So this is statistically, right? Statistically significant okay you flip two coins both are tails is that likely or unlikely what do you think and then this one you flip ten coins and they are all heads any idea what do you think so just without calculating anything you might have a feeling about this you know it might, might, might strike you as likely or unlikely if you think about it for a little bit you flip two coins both are tails what do you think this is, you know, this you'd probably call that likely, wouldn't you? And how about flip ten coins and they're all heads? What would you call that one? That's probably unlikely, don't you think? Because if you look at it, we flipped coins before. You could get a head, a head, a head, then a tail, a tail, then a head, or a tail, then a tail. So there's four outcomes in this one. And if we think about now, we're going to estimate the p-value, the probabilities for all these events. If you take this one, right, there's one event uh, where they're both tails, but that's one out of four. So the p-value, the probability, okay, or uh, the probability is um, one out of four. What's that as a decimal? Zero point two five. What's that as a percentage? Twenty-five percent, right? So, and that's the p-value, right? That's, it. That's another way. It's just the probability. P-value means probability. So the probability for flipping two coins that are both heads is 25%. But flipping 10 coins and they're all heads, my goodness. You have to get a head, then 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 a head, and so on, right? So that's unlikely, isn't it? Don't you think? One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five. So that's 10 heads in a row. <coughs> that is, and I'll show you how unlikely that is. That's actually probability that is 1 over 2 to the power of 10 and which is in fact 1 over and 2 to the power of 10 the calculator just so you know 2 to the power of 10 is 1024 and uh, you know 1 divided by 1024 is 0 0.0009 um, we'll round that up so 98 let's say and then turn that into a percentage just for fun as well we'll just give it as a decimal and a percentage as 0 0.098 percent so you know, that's the p-value very small, isn't it? 
So flipping 10 coins, they're all heads. This now would be a statistically significant event. It's unlikely. Significant event. Uh, this one, the, the two coins, that's, that's likely, so that's not statistically significant. And, you know, sometimes people even put p-values on on uh, real life things uh, like you know you travel for 10 miles on the freeway and you're overtaken by more than three different cars during the drive and so you could do that experiment you could <coughs> take a um, hundred cars um, who went on the freeway for 10 miles out of those cars how many were overtaken by more than three cars and so you might say you might count them all up and and you might find okay out of all those hundred cars um, you know, 21 of them out of 100 were overtaken by uh, th th more than three car three other cars. And so you might say the probability is about 21% that for a particular car driving for 10 miles in the freeway, it's overtaken by uh, more than three cars or something like that. And so so there's ways of calculating this, usually by experimentation. Uh, Matt walking on a sidewalk, he steps in banana skin and falls into a manhole. I mean, what's the probability of that? You know, I can't even think of an experiment for that one. But you'd think it would be very low. You know, let's say one in a million. Very unlikely, right? Uh, and so whatever that is, as a decimal and a percent, right? So, in any case, very low probability there. Now, if, so that's real life. Now, if we go to um, statistical significance in medical science, let's read what this is. It's when the results of a medical trial are cons the results of a medical trial are considered to be statistically significant if they are unlikely to have occurred by chance alone. Okay. So let's take this example too. We test a drug which you believe may prevent colds. It's drug A. We what some drug. There is no control group in this case, but we suppose we know that on average, half of the people will get colds this winter. Fifty percent of people. So out of the population, 50% will get colds this winter. Suppose we treat 100 patients with drug A and find that 55 did not get a cold. Well, that's, that's an improvement, right? Better than 50, you would expect 50 people to not get a cold, but we did this and 55 didn't get a cold. Now, would we conclude that the drug is effective in preventing colds? Or was it just chance that 55 out of 100 patients did not get colds? So the question is, um, could we just as easily, by chance, have got the same result if we had picked a hundred people and given them all a piece of sugar and um, 55 of them did not get a cold and then like, it would be very silly of us to then conclude that, that eating a little piece of sugar will, prevent, will help prevent you from getting a cold. You see what I'm saying? So, what we have to figure out is what is the probability of simply picking a hundred people and then out of that group, 55 or more don't get a cold. Like, what's the probability of that, right? And so we're back to something we did earlier. And, um, and, and, uh, so, so we, and we even, even for this situation, we actually have a formula <coughs> for the standard deviation, which is, square root of p times 100 minus p over n, the sample size. And that works out as uh, 50 times 100 minus 50 over n, and the number of people is 100, and that works out as square root of 2500 over 100, or root 25, which is so if we were to calculate this, in this particular case, we do actually have a formula. Now, as we do the later examples, you know, example 4, and we're just given the p-value, example 5, we're given the p-value, example 6, we're given the p-value. So, in this exam, for 2 and 3, we're actually going to calculate the probability, but uh, for the, the examples after that, we'd be given the p-value and we have to interpret it. So, this, this these are the only examples we're going to do any calculations. Okay, I'm just going to run through it because we've done these before. Um, so, so, but, but it's, I just want to do this quick calculation so we just get a feel for what this p-value thing actually means.
Uh, and that's the point. So if we were to do a um, normal distribution, okay, uh, the mean for for the mean, of course, is fifty, and for groups of one hundred people, the standard deviation is five, and this is for groups of 100 people, 100 random people picked out, the standard deviation is 5 and so one standard deviation above the mean is 55, two standard deviations above the mean is 60, three standard deviations above the mean is 65, etc. Okay, and then below you go 45 and 40 and so on. And so that's the normal distribution for the event of picking 100 people at random and how many of them are going to get colds this winter. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to find the probability was it just a chance that 55 out of 100 patients did not get colds? We want to get the probability that um, 55 or more people don't get colds. And that is what the p-value is. What is the probability that 55 or more people don't get colds? Okay. In other words, what we want to figure out is what is the area underneath the normal normal curve past 55. We have to figure this out. Any idea how you might do that? And we've done it before, do you remember? Well, we've got to get the z-score for 55 and look up our z-table, right? So. 50, the mean is at 0, 55 is 1 standard deviation, 60 is 2 standard deviation, 65 is 3 standard deviations. So these are the Z scores, and if we look up Z of 1, okay, on our table, in your book, or print it off somewhere, or whatever, but if you look up Z1, you'll get the percentile, or the percentage, 84.13, when Z is 1, right? When Z is 1, we get, oops, 84.13. Now, that means, of course, that below 55, that means that below 55, this part of the curve, 84% of uh, the groups of 100 lie. So this is about 84.3 or about 84 percent. Let's just round it, okay? And what is in this part? What percentage of the group, the groups of 100 would lie past 55? It would be 100 minus 84, right? So if you if you if you just do uh, on your calculation somewhere 100 minus 84 and that gives 16. So here we have 16 percent of groups of 100 people um, get 55 or 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 uh, uh, 55 or more. Uh, sorry, don't get colds, but um, 84 percent of the people of the groups of 100 people have uh, you know kind of 55 or less. Um, that don't get colds. Oh, so our p-value, what, what's the probability that 55 or more don't get colds? That is our 16 percent. So the p-value is 16 percent. Okay. And would we conclude that the drug is effective with that p-value? And the answer is no, and why? Why would they not conclude that that's effective? They would not conclude that they would conclude the drug is not effective simply because, simply because the p-value is not less than five percent. That's all. Okay. <clears throat> now, 
If we do this example, example 3, suppose we test a drug, drug B, that we believe may prevent colds. There is no control group in this case, but suppose we know that on average 50% of people will get colds this winter. Same situation as this example. Suppose we treat 100 patients with drug B and find that 65 did not get cold get a cold sorry would we conclude that the drug is effective in preventing colds or was it just chance that 65 out of 100 patients did not get colds how do we figure this out the exact same thing only this time on our normal curve because it's the same distribution it's a if you think about groups of a hundred people being picked randomly from the population on average fifty percent of them uh, of of the people in the groups of a hundred would get colds and the standard deviation is five and so one standard deviation from the mean is fifty five two standard deviations from the mean is sixty three standard deviations from the mean is sixty five okay and of course and so when we look at our z scores fifty is zero this is corresponds to one standard deviation two standard deviations and sixty five corresponds to three standard deviations what we want to figure out is what is the probability of picking a hundred people at random and not doing anything say so let's give them all a pat on the back we'll give them all a pat on the back and then we'll set them on their way now 65 of those people did not get a cold does that give us any evidence that the pat on the back helped the group because you know they did better than the normal population uh, on, on average you should get 50 percent maybe the pat on the back helped them right and what's the probability of, of, of just taking 100 people patting them all on the back send them on the way and then 65 of them you know don't get a cold so probability that uh, of, of doing of the probability of 65 out of 100 not getting colds and, and you basically do nothing and so that's what you're working out so what is the probability that 65 or more don't get colds and we'll just say you know by chance by chance alone by chance alone and it, when we work that out okay we say okay we're looking again for the area underneath the normal curve past 65 which is here okay and what area is that and that corresponds to a z score of three and then we look up our z table right and we look for z score of three and my goodness z scores and on this table it goes to 2.7 lots of them the z tables don't go past 2.7 so for a z score of 3.0 or three it's actually going to be 99.8 five about okay so z score of three corresponds to 99.85 percent do you know what that means that means that the area below 65 right remember that the area below 65 is 99.85 percent of the groups of 100 people and so what percentage is represented by 65 or more uh, of people not getting colds well it's this part here how do you get this little part you go a hundred minus ninety nine point eight five and you get zero point one five right so zero point one five percent of groups of a hundred people picked randomly just 0 0.15% of those groups will have um, 65 or more people not getting colds so the p-value for this drug is 0 0.15 percent that's the p-value now would we conclude that drug B is effective 
What's the answer? The answer in this case, would we conclude that drug, the drug is effective in preventing colds? Yes, we would. Yes, we would. On the one before, would we conclude that drug A was effective? That The answer was no. And why? Simply because the p-value happens to be less than 5%. If the p-value is less than 5%, we say it must have been the drug. Because the for this event to happen by chance, it's very small. If the p-value was here, it was 16%, and that's more than 5%, and we say, oh, that could have just happened by chance. So it wasn't the drug. So example two, it wasn't the drug. The drug wasn't effective. Example three, the drug was effective. It must have been the drug. Now, what are you thinking about all this? Well, one thing to be careful about is when somebody says to you, a drug is effective, they don't always mean that it's definitely going to help you. What they mean is, if you take the drug, you will have a, it, there's a there's a chance that it'll help you. <gasps> okay, drug A was not effective. In other words, they reckon you know taking drug A or just getting a pat on the back or taking a piece of sugar or something. You know, it's the same thing. It, it, it it's not helping at all. It, it's it's not doing anything. Drug B is doing something. Thirty five people still got the cold. If a hundred people took drug B, right? Thirty five people got a cold. And so it's not like effective in the sense that you're not going to get a cold. It's just more effective than if you didn't get the drug. That's all they're saying, okay? And of course, it's then your choice in a free country to decide, hey, is it worth the side effects, etc., or should I try something else that doesn't cost so much money or whatever? And so, but but you have to understand that effective means, uh, let's say, better than taking nothing. It doesn't mean you're not going to get the disease. In fact, what percentage of people in this group did not get a cold? 65 of 100, right, which is 65% uh, of people did not get a cold. What percentage of people did get a cold out of the people that were treated? If we take 100 minus 65, we get 100 minus 65 that's 35. So in fact, 35% did get a cold, right? 35% of people did get colds, although 65% did not. But that's just better than the, that's a better percentage than the population. But again, it doesn't mean that, you know, everyone who took the drug didn't get a cold. So, just trying to explain that. So on to example four. In a clinical trial of drug X, a higher percentage of people who were treated with the drug improved compared with those who received a placebo with a p-value of 0.01. Explain the meaning of the p-value in this case. First of all, could you write that as a percentage please? 0.01 is what percent? It is 1%. And you can try to answer this if you like. I'm going to write it down just so we have this figured out. What is the meaning of the p-value? Okay, so we have a group who were treated and they had a higher percentage of improvement compared to the people who received a placebo, like a piece of sugar that didn't do anything, right? Um, and it just means the higher percentage of treated people um, improving, uh, the probability of that happening by chance is one percent. So the probability that the treated that the treated uh, people's higher percentage um, occurred by chance alone is one percent. Does that does that make sense to you? And so what we're going to do is just uh, to give ourselves some numbers so we can see. Um, we'll go down to this line. Okay, so what happened in this trial was 200 people who had the disease were randomly chosen. 100 were given the drug and 100 were given the piece of sugar. Pl placebo has no effect. The control group, by the way, are the ones that are given the placebo, right? 
That's called the control group. The control. Now, what percentage? So we have 88 plus 12. What's 88 plus 12? That is 100, right? So out of the treated group, we have 88 out of 100, or 88% of people improving. Out of the control group, we have 70 out of 100, or 70% of people improving. So, you know, if you, if you don't get the drug, you still got a 70% chance of improving, it seems. If you do get the drug, you have an 88% chance of improving. But, you know, um, so, so but, and, but, and, and the p value of 1%, you know, there, you're not given where this calculation comes from. Okay, that's the whole point here I'm trying to make. When we did example two and three, we calculated our own p-value because we had um, the uh, performance of the population to work on, right? And and that was fine. And, and so we would get the numbers, we calculate the p-value and see if it's more or less than 5% and then we're done. Now, we're not given the calculation, so hopefully that won't throw you off. I mean, it should make it nicer because at least you don't have to calculate, but you do have to explain. And so the explanation is the probability that 88 out of 100 people improve by chance alone is 1%. I'm going to write that down. You can write down too. See if you understand this. The probability of picking 100 people at random, basically, of picking 100 people at random and, and, and you know, 88 of them improving by chance is uh, 1%. So the probability, or 88 or more, basically, that uh, basically um, 88 out of 100, you know, or more, let's say, people improved by chance alone. is one percent. So the p-value is just saying it's very unlikely that the drug did nothing. Uh, it's very unlikely that the drug didn't have any effect. Not saying that everyone was cured at all. We're just saying that it definitely had an effect. I mean this 88 percent is significantly different than 70 percent. And that's what they're saying. And why would the result be considered statistically significant? Why is that? If we go back to statistical significance in medical science, results from medical trial are considered to be statistically significant if they're unlikely to have occurred by chance alone with a p-value of less than 5%. So there's your answer. Would this result be normally statistically significant? The answer is yes. And why? Because the p-value is uh, less than 5%. That's the reason. It's 1%, right? And and, th and that's it. Now, the thing is, the CEO of the drug company could mess up this whole um, picture. And he could say that, oh, the p-value of 1% means that, oh, that must mean that, okay, only 1% of the people, you know, got worse. But 99% of people improved. Right? See what I mean? That that's the common confusion with this, and it's wrong. So he's saying that okay, that means ninety nine percent of the people who take the drug will improve. And then can you discuss the validity of the CEO's comment? What percentage of this population improved who got the drug? Was it ninety nine percent? First of all I want you to write down what percentage of people who got the drug actually improved as your first point. 88%, right? See? 88 of 100. 88% of treated people, people who got the drug, improved. Not 99%. That's the first point. So he's wrong on that. You're wrong about that, Mr. CEO. Or Mrs. CEO or Miss CEO, right? Now, the second point is, look, Mr. CEO, what we're saying is, with a p-value of 1%, uh, 
Um, the chances of getting an or the probability, sorry, the probability, I should have put that in, prob ab il it of getting an improvement of um, 88 percent by chance alone, that is 1 percent. There's a 1 percent chance of getting such a great improvement rate just purely by chance. So the drug must have done something because 88% is significantly higher than 5%, let's say. And again, we can take these numbers and we can do statistical calculations to come up with the p-value of 1%, but in this class we're not doing it. We're just getting the result and interpreting it. So if we were to look at example 5, in a clinical trial of drug Y, a higher percentage of people who were treated with the drug improved compared to those who received a placebo with a p-value of 0 0.09. Explain the meaning of the p-value in this case. Okay, so see if you can write down what that p-value of 9% means. Did you, did you write something down? Press pause and see if you can answer this first thing here. Okay, I hope you've tried it. Well, I'll try and explain it again. What the p-value of 0 0.09 is, and first of all, write that as a percentage as well, just for fun. 9%, right? It means that the probability of getting such a good improvement by chance alone is 9%, basically, right? So we got an improvement with the treated group, but was that statistically significant? Was that, uh, a, what was the probability of that happening by chance? So you could say the probability of um, the tre our treated group, of the treated group, Um, improving as they did by chance alone is 9%. Okay? And so that's one sentence, and I'm just going to put it over there just so we can really uh, try and understand this. But but if we look, get the percentage of people that improved, and get the percentage of that were given the placebo that improved. Can you do that? So in the so there was 400 people who had the disease, and they were randomly chosen. 200 were given drug X. Oh, drug Y. Sorry. Whoops. 200 were given drug Y. Whoops. And 200 were given a placebo. Okay. Now, what percentage of the treated group improved? What percentage of the control group improved? Right? So what's 170 and, and 30? That's 200, right? So, so 170 out of 200 is 0 0.85, which is, what's that as a percentage? It is 85% of the treated group improved. The control group, there was 160 plus 40, that is what? 200, right? And 160 out of 200 is 0 0.8. What's that as a percentage? 0 0.8 as a percentage is 80%, right? So with the control group, if you didn't, it's basically saying, okay, if you don't get any medicine at all, you have an 80% chance of improving. Um, and the treated group 85% of them improved. Now, is that showing that that it was definitely the drug that caused that extra improvement, or could that extra improvement have been caused just by chance? Could that extra 5% have been caused by chance alone? What's the probability that the extra 5% was caused by chance alone? It is 9%. Okay. 
it's low, but it's not that unlikely. In medical science and in a lot of things in the world, scientists consider oftentimes if it's less than 5%, then it's significant, statistically significant. Okay, that's quite unusual there. We've got to look into that. There must be something going on. There's something to that. If it's more than 5%, they say, right, okay, you know, it's rare. You know, it's it's not common, but hey, it's, it's not that unlikely. You know, it happens often enough to where, you know, that could easily have happened by chance. We could easily have picked 200 people, and we could have, uh, and the drug could be completely useless, and still you get 85% improvement just by chance, right? So, um, I'm just going to write down our sentence for this if you don't like the first one or anybody doesn't like the first one. The probability that. 170 out of 200 um, or more, let's say, people improve by chance alone is 9%. Okay? That's what the p value means. You got it? The probability that this this amazing result of just 5% more improving happened by chance alone is 9%. So it's quite likely. And so would this result normally be considered statistically significant? The answer is no, it would not. Why? Because the p-value of 9% is greater than 5%, the cutoff mark for statistical significance. The CEO of the drug company says that the p-value of 9% still indicates that about, you know, hey, it, that says that 91% of people who take the drug will improve. Discuss the validity of the CEO's comments. Is this true or not? Press pause and see if you can answer that. And what I'd like you to do is uh, just write down one sentence and write down what percentage of people actually did improve who got the drug. So at least you can debunk one thing about what he said, right? So he says 91% of people who take the drug will improve. That's not true, is it? Because we, if you look at the study, in fact, 85% um, of treated people improved. not 91%. That's the first thing. And we could also say something about what this 9% really means, which we've done already. Um, and again, the probability of getting, you know, that 100 of getting this 85% by chance alone is 9%. Okay? And so that's what you, you would also say. You, you would just put this, I don't want to write it down again, I don't want to clutter you too much, but this sentence, you put that here. The probability sorry, Bill it T that 85% uh, or more people improve by chance alone is 9%. So you, just, you, you also say, okay, you know, that's what 9% means. It doesn't mean that you know, nine percent only nine percent of people are gonna gonna get worse if they take the drug. It means that the probability with this clinical trial, you know, the probability that um the the three group did so well is is nine percent. So not significant. Not statistically significant there. So one last example, example six. And this is slightly different. So we'll read this carefully. The drug Viax was once used to treat arthritis. One published study compared, and this is talking about, of course, one of the problems with drugs is the side effects, so you've got to be very careful about that, obviously. The drug Viax was once used to treat arthritis. One published study compared the incidence of heart disease in patients treated with Viox versus patients given the placebo. The study showed a greater incidence of heart disease for the Viox patients with a p-value of 0 0.04. Explain the meaning of the p-value in this case and would this result be considered statistically significant. Press pause, write down a sentence, see what you come up with and then I'll do it. Okay, I hope you press pause and tried it. I'll do it now. So what this means, and we're not given 
any numbers this time. There's no numbers. There's no trigger group, control group. So just, we don't know how many got. Um, we don't know how many got uh, got heart disease. How many did not? We have any of that. We just have the p value. We have one number. That's it. What that means is, and that of course as a percentage is four percent, right? It means that the probability. of the treated group of the the Viox group or the group given Viox um, having the higher percentage of heart disease that they did So having a greater incidence of heart disease, having the greater incidence of heart disease that they did, okay, by chance alone, and this is the trick, by chance alone is 4%. That's what the p-value means. The probability of the group given Viax having a greater uh, incidence of heart disease by chance alone is four percent. Very low, but well, it's low. Okay, not very low. It's low. Is this considered statistically significant? The answer is yes. It is because the p-value is in fact less than five percent, slightly. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of times you, there will be a study done like this: four percent. And then they say, okay, it's just a little bit less than five percent, and it's a very contentious issue. And of course, the drug company uh, really doesn't want to lose billions of dollars, and so they'll do another bigger study just to fully prove, uh, or not, you know. Or they might do other sneaky things to try and hide the study uh, from the public, and that's a different class. That's for a different class. Okay, thank you.